Hi, welcome to Home Tech Adventure. On this channel, I give advice and tips on home computers and related equipment. Many times, like today, I try to make things that seem a little difficult easier to understand. Did you know that saying M.2 versus NVMe is a bit like saying Apple versus MacBook? <laughs> Stay tuned for the full explanation. M.2 drives can come in a variety of forms, and the name of the form tells you the size. A 2280 M.2 is 22 millimeters by 80 millimeters long. At least they made that part easy to understand. M.2 is an interface standard that can use many different connection and communication protocols, such as SATA, NVMe, PCIe, and AHCI. So the title of this video, M.2 versus NVMe, would be better stated as M.2 SATA versus M.2 NVMe. Or, to be more actually exactly precise, it would be M.2 AHCI SATA versus M.2 NVMe PCIe. <laughs> yeah, we'll get into the details of all of those different things in just a moment. Some M.2 drives use the SATA connection. I'll use the latest SATA 3 version that's capable of 6 gigabits per second. These drives communicate with the computer over the AHCI, or Advanced Host Controller Interface. Other M.2 drives use the PCIe connection. It is possible for some of the drives to use AHCI to communicate with the computer through the PCIe connection. AHCI was written for slow hard disks. The AHCI connection does not take full advantage of the speed available with an SSD. So this is not a preferred method to do it. Almost all M.2 drives currently use the NVMe or Non-Volatile Memory Express protocol to communicate with the computer. This protocol was written specifically for SSDs and does take advantage of the speed and parallel operations available to make it for a faster interface. Therefore, an M.2 drive using AHCI will be slower than an equivalent drive using NVMe. You can see the relative speeds of the various M.2 interconnection types in this table. PCIe 3.0 times 2 means two lanes of PCIe 3.0. So PCIe 3.0 times 4 would be twice as fast because it uses twice as many lanes. SSDs cannot always take advantage of the extra speed offered by a given connection. This is especially true of the PCI 4.0 by 4 connection. Let's look at some actual M.2 modules and slots. But first, could you please press the like button on this video? Also, share this with other people that might want to know this information. If you like, please subscribe because that really helps out the channel to get more subscribers and you can see more of these videos. And I really do want you to comment below. Ask me questions, tell me things and stories that you've had experience with on the M.2 topic. Let me give you a bit of a history so you can understand things a little bit better. Starting with this 2.5 inch SATA SSD, this is the form factor that was similar to the hard disks of the day when they first came out. And you can see as technology matured that you don't need the entire 2.5 inch area for the little teeny tiny SSD that's inside. So manufacturers figured out well, boy, we're wasting a whole bunch of space. Can't we just make a form factor that's a little bit smaller? The first thing they came up with was this. This is an M SATA drive, or micro SATA, and actually it has the same interconnection as this and everything. It does have, this one happens to be a smaller one, uh, 64 gigabyte, whereas this is a 250 gigabyte, but still it is the same type of connection and uh, same type of interface, just a different form factor. Now, this small little one normally lives on this particular little teeny circuit board. 
it just slides in like this and there's two little screws that I have that will put in there and it actually is connected through this little case to a USB and it works very fast. It's a real good option if you need a really fast USB drive and can afford just a little bit extra space. It's much faster than most USB drives. Now the M.2s came along and you can see this is an M.2 and this is the micro SATA so it is a totally different form factor and this these notches I'm not sure about the notches here but the notches on the M.2 this is the M and the B notches and that's typical of a SATA drive pretty much if you see an M and a B notch it's probably a SATA drive it's possible it's something else but almost always if it's got the two notches it's a SATA drive now that this SATA drive is actually the exact same drive as this one right here that was in the two and a half inch case and I mean exact it's the same manufacturer it's the same size both two Samsung's both 250 gigabytes both SATA connection these would have the exact same performance just connected up differently now if we look at the NVMe drive I have here this is also 250 gigabyte this is also made by Samsung but you can see it only has one notch for the most part, if you find an M.2 drive like this with one notch, it's going to be an NVMe drive. Again, these can vary though, so do your research on the particular drive that you're looking at. This one actually says NVMe right there, so it makes it really easy to figure out, but those are two different forms. Let's look at the slots that the M.2 drives go in. I picked this one for an example because it actually has two M.2 slots one high one and one low one and the low one and you can see it says Wi-Fi it's made for a Wi-Fi module this is actually a 2230 module 22 millimeter by 30 millimeter module and if I remove it let me just get this little screw out so you can see this has two little notches and this would be an E key and I think it's a B key or an E key and an A key that's definitely different than the other one and it's made to fit in this little Wi-Fi M.2 slot. So M.2 can be used for various things. The designers who built this particular computer made it to work only with NVMe drives. It will not work with a SATA drive. So if we take our NVMe drive here, and we wiggle it in there it goes and you push it down you just put in the little screw uh-oh got it miss, messed up on my screwdriver there if we just put in the little screw there we go we have a properly installed m.2 drive what should you buy if you're looking at an m.2 and your computer is compatible with the nvme protocol I would absolutely buy an NVMe drive. It really does make sense. And in today's market, the price isn't that much different from a SATA drive. The SATA M.2s were a transitional technology and they will be fading away in the next few years. Having said that though, the M.2 SATAs are still useful. I have a home theater PC and the M.2 drive that you saw that was a SATA drive that I was showing you earlier is the one that's from that home theater PC. It provides plenty of performance for that particular PC. And if you're doing just ordinary office tasks, surfing the web, watching movies online, or maybe even gaming, the M.2 SATA drives should be just fine, or even a two and a half inch SATA. Remember, they have the same performance. Generally for newer systems, I would buy an M.2 NVMe PCIe 3.0 times four drive. It, that's the one that makes the most sense in this current market as of the filming of this video. Now, if I was on a real budget, or perhaps maybe for some lower power consumption with a light laptop, I might choose a M.2 PCIe NVMe did I say that right? No. Okay, let's start over again. M.2 NVMe PCIe 2. Okay, let me one one last time. This is really complicated to say. Okay, one last time. So I buy an M.2 NVMe 
PCIe 3.0 by 2 drive to save a little bit of money or for lower power consumption. Some of those are very low power consumption. PCIe 4.0 by 4 drives have been available for a while now. The performance gained by that is not right now worth the extra money. However, the drives have been coming down in cost and they will continue to come down in cost as the technology matures. Already there's been a few drives where I would actually really consider it because the cost is low enough that it competes with the PCIe 3.0 by 4 drives. So look for those PCIe 4.0 drives in the future. Larger SSDs are faster. If you look at a one terabyte drive and compare it to the exact same model of drive in 512 gigabyte size, the one terabyte size will be faster than the 512 gigabyte size. You should look at the specs before buying an M.2 SSD. The random read and write performance specs are more important than the sequential read and write performance specs for most ordinary computer uses. Also, queue depth is important. Q1 means that one operation is requested of the disk at one time. This is very typical of most people's computer use. Q32 would mean that 32 operations are pending for the SSD at one time. This is very unlikely to occur with most people's computer use, so it's not as important. So when you're looking at these specs, look at the smallest Q number that you can find for the 4K random read and write or other random read and write spec that they give on the drive. Also, just to note, IOPS, I-O-P-S, means input output operations per second, and that's how they judge these particular speeds. Higher is better, of course. Sequential read and write performance is only really important if you are transferring very large files, think gigabytes in size, on a regular basis. I recommend that you read reviews for SSDs before you buy. Two sites that I really like are techpowerup.com and pcmag.com. Both are linked in the description. I think both do a good job of reviewing the M.2 SSDs. Why don't you continue your adventure here and watch one of the other videos I have listed. And as always, remember to have fun on your own home tech adventure.